Welcome back. We are here for part two of our video on 11.1. Um, in this one, we have, oh, I thought I had another intro slide. Okay, well, in, uh, if we go back to our previous intro slide, we can remember that in this one, I'm going to talk about how to set up a test, how to actually go through that four-step process, the state plan, do, and conclude. So one of the big things in that plan step is our conditions. So here's a little snippet on conditions for carrying out a test for chi-square goodness of fit. Random, obviously, must be a well-designed random sample or from a randomized experiment itself. 10% is the same when you're sampling without replacement. Make sure that your little n, your sample size, is smaller than one-tenth of the population. Our large counts, this is where things change a little bit. All expected counts must be greater than five. That's literally it. You just check that column. Are your expected counts greater than five? Boom, you met your large counts condition. Two big important cautions to make. Do not perform your calculations with proportions. We've been talking about counts, 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 counts. Make sure it is only counts. And when you're checking the large sample size condition, make sure you're checking expected counts, not the observed counts. All right, here's a little summary on the chi-square test of goodness for fit. It really is kind of that state plan do conclude. You can read through this on your own, copy it, take a photo, whatever makes you happy. Um, but you can see it is very formulaic, kind of how you deal with this. So here's our example for ourselves. In his book, Outliers, Mr. Malcolm Gladwell suggests that a hockey player's birth month has a big influence on his chance to make it to the highest levels of the game. Specifically, since January 1st is the cutoff date for youth leagues in Canada, where many of our NHL players come from, players born in January will be competing against players up to 12 months younger. So the older players tend to be bigger, stronger, and more coordinated, and hence get more playing time, more coaching, and have a much better chance of being successful. To see if birth date is actually related to success, and our success parameter is going to be uh, whether or not they made it into the NHL, a random sample of 80 NHL players from a recent season was selected, and their birthdays were recorded. Here is that record. So... In the first season, 32, second season, 20, third season, 16, fourth season, 12. Just looking at it, you see a serious decline as we go. So can we just already say, yes, people born earlier in the year, they had a better chance at making it into the NHL? Unfortunately, we can't just say that. So do these data provide convincing evidence that the birthdays of all NHL players are evenly distributed among the four quarters of the year? <clears throat> Let's go ahead and begin. We're gonna do a state plan, do conclude. So state, we wanna perform a test of the null hypothesis. In content, it agrees. The alternate hypothesis, in content, it disagrees. So let's read it out. The birthdays of all NHL players are evenly distributed among the four quarters of the year. Alternate, the birthdays of all NHL players are not evenly distributed among the four quarters of the year. See that? How easy is that? The null and the alternate will literally just be like, yes, it is. No, it ain't. No significance level was specified, so I'm going to go ahead and use alpha, 0 0.05, or 95% confidence level. The next thing to do is plan. We we'll love to play this game. Name that, con uh, name that test. But in order to name that test, we have to check our conditions. Our test is going to be the chi-square test for goodness of fit. And our conditions, we meet the random. Well, our data came from a random sample of NHL players, 10%. I don't know the original population. Uh, eventually, they gave it to us. But um, the one thing I could have done is did 10 times 80. And I could have made an inference whether or not I thought that there were more than 800 NHL players uh, in the NHL roster. Um, but so they did tell us that there were actually 879 NHL players in that season. So it really was less than 10%. So we're good to go there. Large counts. Well, first to figure this out, we have to know what our expected count would be. We don't have percentages. They didn't tell us any other information except to say that is there a difference between the different seasonal quarters of the year? If they're if everybody had an even chance and older players really didn't get a better shot, then there should be an even distribution amongst all the categories. There should be about 20 birthdays per quarter, right? That's what you, that's what you would expect that if, you know, just took a random roster of people, more than likely they might have an even distribution of birthdays throughout four quarters of the year. 
So we do our test statistic. We actually solve our chi-squared. Again, we're using 20 as the expected value in each one of our categories, and we end up with a chi-squared value of 11.2. So I go to my chi-squared distribution. I'm gonna go with the degrees of freedom of three because I had four categories, and I go ahead and look at my right tail p-value looking at the table. So I go to degrees freedom three. I find, a, I find two values, which 11.2 lies in between, and that happened to be 9.84 and 11.3 which represent the p-values 0.02 to 0.01. So if I said that simply my p-value was just right above 0 0.01, um, then that would that right there would already be 0 0.011. Or even if I wanted to say it was right below 0 0.019 would be fine as well. But um, let's say we're claiming the p-value is 0 0.011 or even 0 0.0119. It's still going to be less than the alpha 0 0.05, and we end up rejecting the null hypothesis. Since we have convincing evidence that the birthdays of NHL players are not evenly distributed uh, across the four quarters of the year because we were able to reject the null hypothesis. So just to recall back when we had 10.18 for our for our M and M's candy, uh, we had 10.18. It was a the p value was between 0.5 and point. 0.05 and 0.10, so it was greater than the alpha, so we had to fail to reject. In that instance, our p value was, our, our chi value, sorry, our chi squared value was small enough, so we failed to reject. Okay, but here our chi value was 11.1 .1 and we ended up rejecting. So, as I said before, you can't stand by that hard and fast information that if chi squared is large enough, then you can, chi squared is small enough, you can. No, there's, you can't do it with just the chi squared value. You've got to bring it back to the p value and then you've got to compare it to your alpha value and then determine whether or not you can reject the null or the alternate. So, please make sure that you're doing that each and every time you do your state plan. Do conclude with your test statistic chi squared. That's all the information I have for you regarding chapter 11.1. .1. I can't wait to see it in 11.2.